So, so getting back to your original question, how can we let other people know that we have this? You know, there are, there are four types of people. I sent this article to my struggle living with an invisible disability. There are people that don't know and don't really care if they knew. They don't really care. Second group of people are people that understand that we have a brain injury, kind of feel sorry for us, but still want us to act like we don't have a brain injury. The third group of people are people that want us to, to, uh, uh, stop talking about it, you know, and just do what they think we should be able to do. And then the fourth group of people are, are, are those people that accept us where, where we're at, you know, for what we can and cannot do, you know, and it's, it's just really, uh, it's a blessing. My mom, she's going to be 98 in uh, August. And, you know, she, uh, as she's grown older, like what you were saying, Jason, she gained more perspective on what I have to deal with, you know, living with a brain injury. So, you know, getting back to that thing, it's really important not to see ourselves as victims. Not a, We're not victims. You know, there's no happy victims from what I've heard. You know, it's just that we need to, you know, when we become a vic victim, we become a volunteer. You know, so what we need, you know, finding ways that will work for us. You know, and again, it may take take a long time, but it you know, it just it's worth the journey and worth the struggle and worth the process. And I'll sh I'll share this, and then I'll pass to um, Ashley or back to you, Rob, whoever wants to be next with this. Is that you know, when I uh, a friend of my best friend at the time when I first moved to Charlotte, after I had gotten to the point of them telling my me I was unemployable. And I was struggling because people didn't understand and I kept running into social walls and because of nuances and so forth. And we went and we saw a movie called A Beautiful Mind. I don't know if you all have ever heard of that movie, but it's a great, great movie that, you know, and we went to it and a light bulb came on for my friend and he realized that, you know, like uh, that, the doctor in that, he had schizophrenia, but he was very, very intelligent. So, you know, he saw things that other people didn't see. And part of it was good because he was able to crack certain codes. But on the other hand, it was, uh, it was very frustrating for those people who were around him who didn't really know and understand. So, um, but thank God that there are people that, that, that are, uh, you know, out there that understand and have compassion for us. So uh, I have a lot to say as you, can imagine and because i've been doing this now for 17 years and i've written you know 2160 articles 450 460 video presentations for people that learn better through watching and listening because we all learn in different ways and i uh, talked a lot about neuroplasticity and, uh, and the uh, 28 presentations where i just distill, distill a lot of the information 12 ebooks so um, again, uh, Rob, if you ever want me to be a part of this and share one of my one or more of my presentations, I would be happy to. If there's a, a ability to do a share screen with this this um, this format, that would be great because I typically go through and I read my presentations for people that learn through watching and listening. Yeah. So you know that might be something that you like to do and invite a lot of people to this because there are people out in the audience on Facebook that would have liked to come to my presentations. However, due to uh, the HIPAA, you know, and and other, you know, I, I didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel comfortable about me, you know, yeah. inviting. So uh, I'd be willing to do that. And um, I, um, I'm going to be, I've spoken to Harvard University students several times. I'm going to be speaking to, uh, uh, I'm involved with this, uh, called Synapse National. I'm going to be speaking at a national conference on the 20th of, um, of, um, April on hope and the progression of living our best lives after brain injury and stroke. So, um, and I've spoken at different other places, which you can look at. And I have those listed, um, in the, in the, uh, uh biographical information if you're interested but and again one other thing if there's anyone out there that is in this uh that is listening to this podcast 
and you would like me to come speak to your group or organization, and I've done in services too, my email address is second chance to live one, like one, two, three at yahoo.com. That's second chance to live spelled out one at yahoo.com. And my contact information will also be with the, um, my website. If so, if you come to second chance to live dot org on the right hand side, there is a, I have a business card, a new business card. So thanks for letting me, thanks so much for inviting me to be a part of this, Rob. And, and I really enjoy uh, sharing the platform with you, Jason, and with you, Ashley, and you, Rob. So thanks Thank for you. letting me share. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Ashley, uh, what would you like to add to our conversation? Okay, I'm on muted now. Um, I just wanted to say that um, it was interesting how Craig said about like um, the grieving process with us. I had never put it together that way. So when he said that, it kind of made like a, you know, a bell uh -huh. go ding in my head. And <laughs> it's very much true. Very much true. I don't think we give ourselves enough grace. We're our worst critics. We are. And I think I do feel that we we're wanting people to accept what we're not accepting of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's a big one. Yeah. You know, I, I heard Craig say earlier about the whole, um, the whole, uh, they don't want to hear about it anymore. Well, that's great. I don't want to live it every day anymore. <laughs> so, you nailed that. Well, I hear you. You don't want to hear about it anymore. But, but I, I, what I would ask anybody who wants to say those things, who feels those things, is the fact and the action, the behavior that we keep talking about it is an expression of how much we don't feel seen. And it is a, like I said before, screaming to be seen, right? Right. And it took me a long time through the trauma healing process. And like Craig spoke earlier, it's not just the, the brain. It's the psychological aspects. It's the spiritual aspects, it, you know, embrace mental health, right? It creates a lot of trauma for everybody. So if we don't do the trauma work and we're running from ourselves, like he said before, I spoke about the denial. We're asking people to accept what we won't accept about ourselves. How unfair, but also brain injury is illogical. That's just how we are. And that's part of the acceptance of, okay, look, Jason's illogical again. He's illogical again. Let it go. Let me, yeah. let me be illogical. Like, cause if I was in a wheelchair, right, you would, not you would let me sit in my wheelchair so same concept you know uh, address the symptoms with compassion and if you don't understand to ask about them but i found it very interesting that he said that um though they don't want to hear about it because i actually did a video on that and um the other one i wanted to share was you you know you asked like how can we manage these situations right where right. people make us feel these way well there's a way where you know we want to reach them but we may not be able to because they might be in the first three of Craig's list, right? right? So then it comes back to us. How are we going to respond when we are dismissed, when we are rejected? And are mm. we going to, because, you know, the important part here is to remember a lot of us lose impulse control. I certainly did. And so if somebody made me feel dismissed or rejected, my filter, I lost my filter too. So I started saying the things that I thought, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. So Zero I filter here. Like so, vomit. Yeah. Right. And we can't take it back. Yeah. Right. But we do need to take accountability, whether we meant it or not. And so, you know, it, it's, it's having that part of the conversation is, is really recognizing how are we going to respond? And, um, when we have impulse control issues, when we have filter issues, a lot of us may respond very reactively and volatile to those experiences. 
If that's the case, I ask you to reflect upon yourself. Did that happen? And if that happened, self-awareness may be something to work on, to practice, to try to be more present in the moment, to kind of be, to be more aware of the thoughts that we're having, the emotions that we're having, and learn to communicate them like we do through teach back or learn to manage them through positive coping skills like breathing, like positive self-talk, and sometimes drawing a healthy boundary and walking away from the conversation. That's a lot for to ask of a traumatic brain injury survivor. It depends on where they're at in their healing. So caregivers, recognize where that survivor is. Survivors, practice the best you can to get to that place, to where we can be more present, to where we can respond better instead of reacting. You know, something that I've, I've found that's been very helpful for me is I journal every day. Journaling helps me to connect my head to my heart, my heart to my head. And it helps me to process things. And in the process, I invite God. And, you know, I just think that it's so very important that I have God in my life directing, you know, every day I get up, I pray and I meditate. I And I sit down and I, I, I do uh, journaling. I do some spiritual reading. Then I come into my computer. Many times I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, but I ask God to God lead and direct my steps, you know, and it's just really good to know that we don't have to do this alone, you know, and that we can always ask God, a loving God, you know, to be a part of our journey and process one day at a time. And when I get into the projecting into the outcomes, you know, of where things are going, I either get into fear or uh, fear or self pity. So it's just really important for me to just, just do the footwork one day at a time and trust the process. And, you know, my experience, too, with this minimization, marginalization, dismissing and discounting, I've had that through the brain injury industry and uh, uh, by many, uh, many uh, in the uh, Brain Injury Association network that I get minimized, marginalized, because what I'm trying to do is get people to think ass out of the box, where the medical model of treatment keeps people in boxes, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm just trying to get people to realize they don't have to stay in that box. And, um, you know, there's uh, there's a quote by Ziegler. He says that, um, a couple of them, he says, sometimes adversity is what you need in order to become successful. And also another quote by him is, is that regardless of your lot in life, you can build something beautiful on it. You know, so it's just really, really important to realize that we can, um, we can do something different. Even though other people are, are not getting us, we just, I just need to continue to do what I feel I like to do and my mission and vision and, and do that. There's a quote by uh, Steve Jobs that I like. And it's kind of long, but you may have heard it before, but it says, here's to the crazy ones, the rebels, the misfits, the troublemakers, the the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who are not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is is, uh, ignore them because they push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who would think that they could change the world are the ones who do. You know, so the, the, you know, by that encouragement, we just need to keep being ourselves, regardless of whether other people get it, accept it, respect it, or whatnot. You know, just keep doing, keep carrying the flame and just sharing hope because that's what it's going to, hope gets lost. You know, uh, so anyway, I talk a lot about hope on my website. So again, I just really encourage you all to, um, you know, come to my website, secondchancetolive.org, not promoting, just trying to encourage, uh, because what we may be hearing may only just be keeping us in boxes. And uh, my articles and what I do through Second Chance to Live is about encouraging people to understand, like what you were saying, Jason, you know, unless we have that awareness, we're not going to get into an acceptance place. And if we don't get into an acceptance place, we're not going to be able to get into action and do something different. So we'll be stuck 
will be stuck in that either even in the, in the awareness. And and I've written an article, a couple articles that says it's my brain injury awareness making me bitter or better. You know, is brain injury awareness making us bitter or better? Because if we're focusing on the awareness and about trying to get people to get it, that's smoke and mirrors. We're not going to be able to do that. What is really important is to focus on the solution, you know. And there's another quote by Steve Jobs. He says, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. And don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. And don't let the noise of other people's opinion drown out your own inner voice. Instead, follow your own inner voice because it somehow knows what we truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. You know, so it's just really important that we don't wait for people to catch up. We start running our own race and people get are aware. That's fine. But, you know, like there's three, there's four groups of people, you know, it's just really, and I need to remind myself of this too, because I have spent a lot of time trying to convince my brother, you know, of things. And uh, it's just been fruitless, you know, for the most part. So it's, I just need to run my own race stay in my own lane and fight the good fight as I feel led to, to do that, you know? And, um, so thanks. Thanks for letting me share. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Those are powerful words from Steve jobs and things that we can live by. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Ashley, is there things that you want to share before we tune out? No, I just appreciate Craig and Jason's uh, wisdom. It's very, uh, yeah enlightening and inspiring and feel like I learned a lot today. So thank you. Oh yeah. Thank you. You're this, welcome. And yeah, to, thank, uh, to, thank you, Rob. to Sharon or Shannon, I'm, I messed up your name. Uh, who was watching live. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we come to do this to, to be spokespersons. If that's the correct word for TBI injured survivors um, just to get awareness out there. Cause that's, there's not enough out there. There's, there can be, we can do better. That that's the bottom line. We can do better. And then a lot of the, a lot of the misunderstanding out there in the world is because we're silent. So mm. for anybody that speaks up for brain injury awareness, I, I applaud you and thank you so much for that. And to Jason, you, to you, Rob, and to you, Ashley, and to you, Craig, for all the wisdom and platforms that we're all creating to create safe spaces for people to share their voices and to be heard. So thank you all. Thank you, Jason. And, and my uh, Facebook page, too, if anybody liked, would like to join it, it's called Building Your Life After Traumatic Brain Injury. Okay. So you all are welcome to become a member of our, our website. And uh, what I typically do is I present articles and video presentations that I create. So it's I'm just uh, it's another avenue that I'm uh, presenting information. Jason, if you'd like to reach out to me, you're welcome to. You know, go to my website. And, you know, if again, uh, it's second chance to live one at yahoo.com. And uh, if you'd like to, you're welcome to. And you too, Ashley. And Rob, and you know, I'd be happy to, to share information with you that's sure benefited me over the years. Yes, so. the links to everybody's websites and um, uh, Jason, your is it vulnerable lolly? Vulnerably lolly. I know I made that a mouthful. It's a poet in me, but I show <laughs> up vulnerable. So everyone can find me on any platform at, at vulnerably lolly. I did put it in the chat. And I also have a website. I have my own business. It used to be a nonprofit. I changed it to an LLC because nonprofit's too much for me to run with a brain injury. So um, it's called decisivelife.org. I do a lot of bullying prevention education um, as well as um, I'm about to open up speaking on the mental health uh, first aid training as and being a life coach in trauma and TBI. So uh, like I said, awesome. that's in the chat for you. Yes, and that will also be in the links. I'll put links in the description of the video awesome. when it gets posted onto YouTube. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you guys so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Craig and Jason. Yes. Um, Thank you, Rob. Thank you. If, if you like the content today, please uh, consider hitting subscribe, sharing with a friend and share it with someone that does not have a brain injury because they need to hear this too. Yes, uh, it's very important that we just get awareness out there. Thanks for joining us, guys. Ashley, any closing thoughts from you? Have a great rest of your weekend. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Bye-bye.